Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Quran Weekly. This is your brother Omar Suleiman. And today we're going to talk about the next person in the superstars lineup who, to be honest with you, has too many virtues for us to cover in one video, so I'm not even going to try. In fact, I'm just going to try to cover one quality of his. And this is the man who was so great that the Prophet said about him, لَوْ كَانَ نَبِيًّا مِنْ بَعْدِي مَكَانَ عُمَرَ If there was to be a prophet after me, it would have been Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Now, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, we can basically write books about each and every single chapter of his life. He's someone who's admired by both Muslims and non-Muslims alike. In fact, Michael Hart, uh, he actually wrote in his book, The 100 Most Influential People, that Umar ibn al-Khattab was number 52. Now to us as Muslims, after Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he's the man. Now, what are some of the qualities we can take from Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu? We could take from his humility. We could take from his fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We could take from his, this, his ability to distinguish truth from falsehood. After all, his name was Al-Faruq, الذي يفرق بين الحق والباطل. He's the one who distinguishes between truth and falsehood. But what we see from Umar al-Khattab more than anything else is the transformation of a man who was entirely unjust to a man who became a symbol of justice for all of mankind. Umar ibn al-Khattab teaches us many lessons in justice and leadership. In fact, under his Khilafah, Umar ibn al-Khattab would even fear for these animals and he would sometimes say to the animals, Wallahi, I'm afraid that I will be asked about you. The same man who used to torture people before Islam used to say that I'm afraid, he used to shed tears saying, I'm afraid the donkey in Iraq will come and testify against me on the Day of Judgment or the camel that is overburdened will come and testify against me on the Day of Judgment. Think about how powerful that is, a man who cares even for the animals under his rule. If we look at him radiallahu ta'ala anhu, we can find that he instituted night patrols. He used to go out every single night radiallahu ta'ala anhu with pounds and bags of rice and wheat and flour on his back serving the people who were hungry. If there's an incident where there was a man whose wife was about to give birth, he goes and he brings his wife radiallahu ta'ala anhu to assist the woman in giving birth. We find so many different uh, incidents that take place with Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu just while he was on those night patrols. But truly, we can see how outstanding his leadership was on, or during the year of Ramadan, which was the 18th year after Hijrah, uh, which was called the year of ashes, the year that the Muslim was struck by a serious famine. In fact, that year alone, 60,000 refugees had come to Medina because they had no food, they were not able to eat. This was a year under Umar ibn al-Khattab that wild beasts began to attack human beings in the street that Umar ibn al-Khattab had to pray janazah on people by the tens. In fact, Umar ibn al-Khattab that year, he made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, Allahumma la taj'al halaka ummah Muhammadin ala yadi. Oh Allah, do not allow the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa to be destroyed on my watch. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he tells us of two instances that took, two incidents with Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu that year. Umar ibn al-Khattab used to come with bags of oil and used to come with, with all kinds of goods and he would find people that were, unable to, to, that were unable to live, that were unable to function. In fact, once Umar ibn al-Khattab saw a man that was licking the edge of a metal piece for just to try to get some form of oil, to try to get the last piece of butter. Every time Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu saw someone who was, who was deprived of something, he would deprive himself of it. So when people were deprived of meat, he deprived himself of meat. When people were deprived of oil, he deprived himself of oil. When people were deprived of butter, he deprived himself from bu of butter. When people were deprived of anything, he felt like he himself had to be deprived of that. Imagine this leader, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who once he walked into his home during this time and he saw his son had purchased a piece of watermelon. And when he saw his son with watermelon, and his son bought this with a few seeds, he went chasing after his son until his son started crying, until he took the watermelon from him. And he said, Bakhim Bakh, the son of Amir al Mu'mineen. Bakhim Bakh is an expression you know, of, of, of being surprised. Bakhim Bakh, Ibn Amir al Mu'mineen, the son of the commander of the believers, eating watermelon. And he said, Wallahi, we will not eat from this until the entire Ummah has this. And so he deprived himself of that radiallahu ta'ala anhu also. And he said a very powerful statement, which we should really consider in leadership. <laughs> How can I consider myself to be a shepherd? How can I consider myself to be a shepherd and I am not struck with what my flock is struck with? 
Subhanallah, and that's, that's the true concept of servant leadership that Islam brought. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu that year actually changed colors. So sometimes we can see some of the descriptions of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu that he was very fair-skinned, sometimes we can see that he was very dark. And the reason being that because of the lack of nutrition, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu changed colors and in fact the Sahaba said that we were afraid that if the famine continued any longer, Umar ibn al-Khattab was surely going to die. 40,000 of those 60,000 refugees had passed away and then, walhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lifted the famine from the believers and they still had their Khalifa, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He was a man of justice even with non-Muslims. So we have an incident that took place once where in Egypt, one of the children of Umar ibn al-As radiallahu anhu was racing with a Christian Coptic and when he lost the race, he went up to him and he lashed that man, he hit that man in the face in the name of his father, that I am the son of the nobles. And so whenever that Christian man was hit, he knew that there was a man of justice in Medina, that the Khalifa was a just man. He went to Medina to, com to complain to Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. When he got to Al-Medina, he found Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu cleaning the masjid. And he told Umar ibn al-Khattab what had happened. Now did Umar ibn al-Khattab say, look, I'm busy spreading Islam all through the corners of the world. I don't have time for this. No, Umar ibn al-Khattab summoned his governor, Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu and his son to Medina to stand in front of the Christian Coptic. And he confirmed the, the story. And then he gave the Coptic a whip. And he said, lash the one who lashed you. And then you also should lash his father. And he said, he said first, he said, you know, why would I do that? He's, and Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu said, because you were hit in his name. SubhanAllah, look at this justice. So Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu actually commanded this, this Christian who was living under his rule, look at the justice, to lash both Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu and his son. So there was justice with um, the Christians, there was justice with the Jews, there was justice with the animals, there was justice with the poor, there was justice with his own family. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu taught us so many profound lessons in leadership and justice and not transgressing other people's rights. And subhanAllah, even whenever he conquered or when he opened Jerusalem, there was no bloodshed when he came to Jerusalem. And we all know the type of welcome that he received and the way that he was dressed. Whenever the patriarch took Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu to the church of the Holy Sepulcher and the time of Salat al-Dhuhr came in, he told Umar ibn al-Khattab, why don't you go ahead and pray here? And Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu said, no, because if I pray here, it wasn't because he was, he was looking at it from the fiqhi aspect, he said, because if I pray here, I'm afraid that Muslims will come later and they will say this is a masjid because Umar ibn al-Khattab prayed here. So he took a few steps outside of the church and he prayed his Salat al-Dhuhr and lo and behold, today at that very location, we have Masjid Umar, the Masjid of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. So this was a man who truly saw things in, in a light of justice and compassion and in fact, even today in the United Nations Charter, we have a statement from Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu in which he said, how can you enslave a man who was born free? SubhanAllah, this is from our deen. So we should take pride in these figures and in these role models and we should try to implement that concept of servant leadership. Now, does that mean that, we're, you know, does that mean that this message is only directed to uh, masjid board presidents or people that are in charge of Islamic organizations? No, because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Kullukum ra'an, each and every single one of you is a shepherd. And every single shepherd is responsible for his flock. The mother is responsible for her home. The husband is responsible for his family. The, you know, the person who's in charge of an, of an organization is responsible for that organization. Everyone is responsible, whether it's the imam or whether it's the ma'moon, whether it's the husband or whether it's the wife, whether it's the, the father or whether it's the child. Everyone is responsible for someone else and they need to deal with them with justice feel their pain and at the same time strive to better the conditions of everyone around them. And if we embody justice and compassion, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show us justice and compassion. So think about this and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us inshallah with that quality of justice and that quality of compassion. And I just want to mention one thing which is so powerful. Even the day that Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu was killed, the day before he saw Abu Lu'lu al-Majusi, and Abu Lu'lu al-Majusi, he made a comment to Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu that Umar understood meant that he wanted to kill him. And Umar radiallahu anhu even shared that with his companions. 
And they said, so why don't you go ahead and kill him? And Umar al-Khattab knew that it would be injustice for him to kill the man or to punish the man just because he understood from his comments implicitly that he was saying that he wanted to kill him. SubhanAllah, so he showed the man justice. And when Umar al-Khattab was leading the salah and he was stabbed and he was killed, when Umar al-Khattab lived for some time to speak after that stabbing, he said something so powerful and I want us to really think about this as Muslims. One of you know, his two key concerns, one of them was that the believers continue to pray, that they continued their salah. The second one, and this should really bring tears to our eyes and soften our hearts when we see the condition of the ummah today. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, who was the one that killed me? And they said, it was Abu Lu'lu al-Majusi, the fire worshiper. And he said, Alhamdulillah, the one who killed me was not a believer of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Alhamdulillah, wasn't a Muslim. SubhanAllah, he was so concerned with the unity of the Muslims that even at that moment when he was stabbed multiple times and the blood was flowing from his body, he said, Alhamdulillah, it wasn't a Muslim that killed me. Now you can understand why, upon many other reasons, if there was to be a prophet after me, it would have been Umar. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to join us with him and with the rest of the great companions in the family of the Prophet وسلم, in the highest level of Jannah al Firdaus. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullah. We'll see you next week, inshaAllah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Whoa. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Quran Weekly. So do yourself a favor, if you benefited from this video, go ahead and like it and share it on your Facebook and Twitter. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, as is narrated in Sahih Muslim, man sanna fil islami sunnatan hasana, falahu ajru wa ajru man amana biha, that whoever does something good, inshaAllah ta'ala, and starts it, or shares it, and other people follow, then he will get the reward that he has, and of course the reward of anyone who followed him in that, inshaAllah. So if someone else benefits from this, you get the same reward as the presenter, inshaAllah, and the same reward as the producer. So go ahead and like it, love it, share it. Jazakumullah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.